Hello, hola and ni hao students. My name is Joyce Arewale and I'm excited to welcome you to the very first IL Texas Leadership Speaker Series. Today I have here with me the co-hosts of our speaker series and um, they are from our various campuses from around the state. So I will give them the opportunity to introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Sheldon Williams from the Lancaster DeSoto High School campus and I am a senior. Hi, my name is Summer Siddig, and I am a senior from the Arlington Grand Perry campus. Hello, my name is Tori, and I'm a senior from Gallen High School. Hi, my name is Russell Leach. I'm a senior here at Katie West Park High School. Hello, my name is Joyce Adewale, and I am a senior here at Katie West Park High School, who currently holds the position of sergeant in the MC JROTC program. Here at IO Texas, leadership is our middle name, and our leadership speaker series give, gives us the opportunity to learn from and engage with some of the world's greatest leaders. Today, we have the honor to be joined by Ambassador Christy Kinney. Ambassador Kinney holds the State Department's highest rank of a Korean ambassador. Over her 30 years career, she has represented the United States abroad as ambassador three times and served in senior position at the State Department and the White House. Ambassador Kenny was the U.S. ambassador to Thailand, where she helped assist during the floods of Vietnam during 2011, as well as the military coup in 2014. She was the first woman to hold this position in Thailand from 2006 to 2010. During this time, she coordinated assistance over multiple different natural disasters. Ambassador Kenny grew up in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. She graduated with a bachelor's degree from Clemson University and a master's from Tulane. She also attended the National War College and speaks a multitude of languages, including Spanish, French, as well as Thai, and a bit of Tagalog. Eagles, please join us in giving a warm Isle Texas welcome to our guest speaker, Ambassador Christy Kelly. Welcome, Ambassador Kenny, and thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come visit us. Here at IO, at IO Texas, we inspire to become the international leaders of tomorrow each and every day. With that being said, we would love to hear from you. The floor is yours. Thank you. Can you all hear me? Yes. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. Can we have that a little louder? Good afternoon. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks for a great introduction, everybody. I'm really happy to be here with you today. Estoy muy feliz, muy contento, muy honrada de tener tiempo con todos ustedes hoy. I cannot say that in Chinese. I'm so sorry. I know you all could. So thank you for having me. We're going to talk about leadership in a minute. And you've heard the highlights of my biography. But I want to take you back to when I was in high school. I went to a public high school in Maryland. And what I hope is going to show you is leaders are made, they're not born. You get choices every day and opportunities, and it's how you take them that matters. I was a good student, but not a great student. Y'all in the back row, hey, I see you. That's where I sat in school assemblies. So I know it looks good from up there. I sat with my friends. We did not have a lot of speakers like this. The only speaker I recall at my high school was a pro football player who came to career day. I was pretty sure that wasn't a career that was going to work for me. So it wasn't a particularly helpful speaker. But I did have a lot of great friends, and I had some really good teachers. So my friends talked me into trying out for a school musical. That's when we learned that I cannot sing. So I did not get a part in the musical. This is way too bad, because I would love to sing. If you gave me a microphone, I'd love to be the girl who stands on stage and sings. It's not going to happen. I tried out for sports teams. I made the basketball team. I got my tooth knocked out in practice going for a rebound. And as we sat at the dentist's office, my mother killed my basketball career right then and there. This is not happening again. You're done. The dentist unhelpfully said, if you got an elbow and a mouth when you were going for a rebound, you weren't competitive. So maybe basketball isn't for you anyway. I made several other sports teams where I sat on the bench the entire season. But from that, I learned that I love sports, and I love watching them, and I'm not afraid to try to play them. 
I also tried some public speaking. One of my teachers said, why don't you enter a few public speaking contests? And I did a lot better at that. And I also had jobs, I had part-time jobs. Anybody been to an Arby's? Yes. Okay, well, I washed tables at Arby's. That was not a fun job. I um, worked at a movie theater behind the concession stand. I did popcorn. Popcorn was my specialty. I've had enough popcorn for a lifetime, but I liked the job. I had great bosses. I learned a lot. I worked at a department store in the teen division. And my best part-time job, I was a tour guide in the United States Capitol. Spent an entire summer giving tours to the population who came through. Some citizens of the United States, some from other countries. And that was a great experience, explaining the United States of America and showing off our nation's capital, which is, I consider my hometown, to other people who came in. The moral of my story is, I still have all those friends. I still remember those teachers. And I learned that you should try things. You should get out and seize opportunities when they're presented to you. And the worst thing that happens is you could learn maybe you're not good at it. Maybe it's not good for you. Maybe I am never going to be asked to sing a song in public. Maybe my singing will all be in the shower. It's a good lesson to learn earlier rather than later in life. And you all have extraordinary advantages. You are going to an educational institution that teaches you not one, not two, but three languages. This will allow you to connect with people across your communities, across the state, across the United States and with other countries. You are given opportunities to hear speakers, to join teams, to build your teamwork skills, to lead through serving others, to volunteer. These are extraordinary opportunities that will last you a lifetime. And so as we go into more of a Q&A, I want to encourage every single one of you, you can lead every day. You don't need a title to lead. Leadership is making a difference, having an impact, helping somebody else. Maybe you help a new student get adjusted. Maybe you help coach somebody who's struggling a little bit. Maybe you're just a supportive teammate who's helping organize a large event like this. And I know lots of people had to help out in that. I want you to seize those opportunities. As long as it's safe and it's legal, I want you to continue to seize opportunities. And most of all, I want you all to soar high because the world awaits you. So thank you very much. I'll turn it over to you all now. Thank you so much for that little introduction. Um, so what are some good traits of followership? A good follower, by the way, who's also a good leader because leaders need to know how to follow at every level, a good follower pays attention, looks out for their teammate, shows a lot of compassion, and also is someone who can communicate and understand what it is you're doing. What are you following? What's your mission? Why are you doing what you're asked to do? So a good follower is someone who may also be a good leader themselves, but they understand their role in today's game. Those of you who play sports, you're not the most valuable player every game. You're not supposed to be. You're helping everybody. You're helping the team. And that's what a good follower is. They're a good teammate. Thank you, Ambassador Kennedy. That's so insightful. And in your long career, who, who influenced you for uh, like the most? I've had a lot of great influences. I've been lucky since early in life. As I said, I've had great friends, people who are still friends from childhood. I've had great teachers, but I also had the privilege as a U.S. diplomat of working for some exceptional secretaries of state. I worked for Secretary Colin Powell, whose funeral, unfortunately, I attended two weeks ago, but an extraordinary man, a gifted communicator. I worked for Secretary Madeleine Albright, the first woman to ever be Secretary of State, for Secretary Condoleezza Rice, who's an amazingly articulate woman, and for Secretary Hillary Clinton, whose pragmatic skills as a diplomat were really impressive and like anything else, you learn by watching them. You watch them do things and think, oh, that's what I should be doing. That's how I should connect with other people. That's how I should run a meeting. That's how I should give a speech. So I hope you all have lots of people you're watching like that too, whether they're in person or you're seeing them on social media or on TV. Thank you. I think it is always good to have a good 
role model, but um, I know over the course of your life, you've had, you've helped multiple people, you've had a great impact, but I wanted to ask you, what is the most memorable time that you think you can remember a time where you impacted someone's life positively? Thank you for asking that. I hope we all look for ways to help someone else. There's nothing that makes you feel better than being a good person and helping somebody else along the way. I'm gonna give you two examples and they're very different. One, I was the US ambassador to the Philippines and we did a lot of development work, particularly in the Southern Philippines, which was a very poor area of the country. And I visited a village where the United States government had installed solar power. This was a very remote village way off the power grid and they'd never had power before. And we installed solar facilities and to walk around and hear people talk about the difference that light made to them, to be able to study at night, to be able to boil water, you know, the difference was extraordinary. And it makes you feel very proud to think that you're representing a nation who understood the needs and were able to partner with this village because they were the ones who would be running the solar system. So we didn't just install it, we taught them how to run it how to charge for it so it could keep running, but charge what people could pay. And the second is a very personal one. I've mentored a lot of people in my life as people have mentored me. And one of my mentees just got her first ambassadorship. And she's a Korean American who's a wonderful woman. And I was so proud of her and really thrilled when she stood on the stage to say that she would never have gotten this if it hadn't been for Christy Kenny being in her life. So those are moments that make you really happy. And she's now going to soar on behalf of the United States. Wow, that was really inspiring. Thank you. What are some memorable moments that you've had to show leadership at? You know, there's a lot of times that you need to show leadership, but I think it's most often in times of crises. It's kind of easy to be a good leader when everything's going well. I mean, we've all experienced over the last year and a half a time of crises, time of having to move school and everything else online with almost no notice. I mean, I don't think any of us expected to have a global pandemic come along. I hope we didn't. And so I found in times of crises, and in fact, I met, I'll call out General Timberlake sitting over there in the back. We met each other when he was a senior general in the United States Marine Corps because the United States was partnering with Thailand to do relief in the time of historic and devastating floods. And so being able to show leadership in moments to think of what do I need to do to look after my people, our facilities, and then how do we help? How do we partner with a country that's a treaty ally without overwhelming them? You don't wanna take over their relief effort, but to think that we could find ways, we could be creative enough to look at how we could partner in helping alleviate suffering and you're all doing this on the fly because you don't have a lot of time to think. So it really calls into play all your leadership skills. We did something similar in the Philippines after a devastating typhoon. And to think that we can very quickly think about keeping our people safe, pumping the water out of our facilities, restoring wind damage, and how do we help? What do we do to help and how can we help and where can we best help? So those are moments of leadership to me that really stand out. Thank you. Thank you for being a leader. So going forward, what must our country do to stay in a position of leadership and also a power and a, put in a position that we can also help others when it comes to world affairs? I think all of you would agree with me that kind of the best thing the United States can do is be engaged with the rest of the world. Because let's face it, the world is global. Everything we're wearing, some component was made somewhere outside the United States. You might think we'd love to have all that happening in the United States, but we don't have all the raw materials. We need other countries to be friends, to be allies, to want to buy US goods and services, to feel friendly toward us and not threaten us. And I think the best way is to engage across everything, not just through our diplomats and through our governments, but through educational exchanges, through global businesses, American global businesses, through the NGO community, the people who work Save the Children, the International Red Cross, all of these organizations. And it's all about engaging. 
you all are already there. You're studying languages, you're learning about other cultures, but it's learning. How do we work with other people? How do we manage our disagreements? Because we all have them, whether they're between two people or between two countries. And, and how do we do things that benefit our peoples? And so I think the answer is for the United States to stay very engaged, to resist the temptation to think, you know, we're just America, we're gonna keep everything in our borders. You know, we have a lot of challenges to manage here in the United States, we know that, but so does the rest of the world. And for example, if we're ever gonna get over a global pandemic, we won't get completely over it until the whole world is completely over it because people travel around the world. We move back and forth, diseases travel. They don't know a border. They could care less where a border is. And so all of these things really require engagement and involvement. Yes, ma'am, thank you so much for that. Um, as you can see, we have a lot of students out here in front of us, but we also have a lot of students online that are watching us. So I believe now we are gonna pass it on to some of the schools that have questions for you. I love that. Hey to everybody who's online. Yeah, first up is Lancaster DeSoto High School. What's your question for Ambassador Kenny? Hello, Ambassador Kenny. I hope all is well with you today. First, I would like to thank you for being here and taking time out of your day, and I'm truly honored to have this opportunity to speak with you. My name is Niobe Gray, and I'm a senior here at the Lancaster DeSoto campus. As a young woman myself, who's also interested in a career in foreign service, I want to know, what influenced your decision to become an ambassador and what unexpected challenges did you face in achieving that goal? Thank you for that question and thank you for watching us online through the miracle of modern technology. Uh, I did not plan to be a United States ambassador. I didn't plan to be a diplomat. My family has never been involved overseas. We lived a very peaceful life in our neighborhood and community. And I had good friends who were gonna go take the test to be a diplomat and they said, you should come too. It's free. It's a job, like, okay. And I loved it. I took the test, I passed, I got hired. My mother was furious. This was not what she planned for her only daughter. She didn't speak to me for four months and she never liked my career, I might add. She kept saying, can't someone else do that? When I called to tell her I'd been asked to be an ambassador, she said, well, why does it have to be you? So mom, it's kind of an honor to get a call from Secretary of State Colin Powell asking you to be an ambassador. She said, well, it doesn't seem like an honor to me. I want you at home. But the truthful matter is I loved it. I love the chance to represent our nation. I love the chance to interact with other cultures. And, and I have to tell you, I felt like I went to sleep most nights feeling like I might have in a tiny way made the world a little better, a little safer, a little more prosperous. There were definitely challenges. I don't look like many people think an ambassador should look like. I'm not tall, I'm not broad shouldered, I'm not a man and I don't have silver hair. And a lot of people think that's what you should look like if you wanna be an ambassador. So anytime you walk into a room and you don't look like what people expect, you have to then show you're better prepared, you're better organized, you're more articulate and that you belong there. And for me, that was a good challenge. I also found um, foreign militaries Certainly the US, the, military, the US military has a lot of women now, but the military in Thailand and the Philippines and Ecuador did not have women anywhere. And so a female ambassador, and as the first female ambassador from the United States to those countries was so confusing to them. And, and my answer was to try to make it easy for them, to show up prepared to talk. If they wanted to talk about our F-16 fighter pilots, our F-16 fighter jet upgrade program, I'd be prepared to talk about that. Whatever you need to be talking about, I'm gonna be prepared. I will be professional, I will be ready. And in fact, it worked. They understood I was the voice of the United States of America. I was the face of the United States of America. And I had done my homework. I was prepared, I was ready to talk and discuss. And those turned out to be really important relationships because both in Ecuador and in, the, in Thailand, they had military coups while I was there. So it, if you know what a coup is, it's when the military overthrows an elected government. And so those were sort of important moments. And so to be, know these people and to be able to talk to them, even in moments of difficulty was, was really, really helpful. Thank you, Lancaster DeSoto High School. I believe our next 
High School will be coming from Windmill Lakes. Windmill Lakes, what is your question for Ms. Ambassador Kenny? Hello, Ms. Ambassador Kenny. How are you doing today? I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. My question for you today is, during your career, was there any point of time where you had to be more of a follower than a leader? It's a great question. Those of you all heard that, were there times when I had to be a follower, not a leader? And the answer is often. First of all, the U.S. Diplomatic Corps, the State Department, is a lot like the United States military. We have ranks, and you enter at the bottom. And I'm extremely fortunate to have ended at our very highest rank. And for those of you women out there, there have only been seven women who've ever had that rank. So thank you very much. I'm also married to someone who got that rank, and we're the only married couple where both have ever hit that rank. So we're pretty proud of ourselves. But a lot of time you spend being a follower. You're more junior and you are reporting to someone. And so you have to learn how to be a part of the team and, and how to interpret instructions, how to ask for clarification if you don't understand them and how to do a good job of being a teammate. And even by the way, when you get the big titles, you still have people above you. You report to the Secretary of State or frankly, any other cabinet member, the Secretary of Defense, Secretary of Commerce, the Vice President, the President, and the American people. So you have a lot of people out there who are above you. So sometimes you're a follower, you're following instructions. And it's a good skill to learn because you won't lead every day of your life. You know, every, everything we do, there is sometimes you're a follower and sometimes you're a leader. And it's important to know the difference of when it's your turn to lead and when it's your turn to be in a support role. Thank you, Woodman. Thank you, Woodman Lakes High School. Next up, we have College Station. Aggieland, what's your question? Hi, Ambassador Kenny. Um, my name is Jocelyn Thames. I'm a junior here at the Aggieland campus. Um, we all just wanted to give you a warm hi. hi. Um, my question for you today is, in Nile, Texas, nosotros aprendremos tres idiomas, English, Espanol, y Chino. As someone who speaks multiple languages yourself, how did being multilingual give you an advantage in your career? Thanks, and thanks, Aggie Lamb, for that howdy. I feel like I'm really in Texas after hearing that, so thank you. I should note I'm married to a West Texan, so I do have a little Texas connection, but I have not lived in Texas. So all of you are studying languages. Can I see a show of hands? Who thinks Spanish is their best language? Okay, who thinks Chinese is their best language? Well, I'm so impressed at that. I do speak Spanish, and most days it's pretty good, but as you know, every day is not a great day when you're speaking another language. I don't speak Chinese. I found learning Thai incredibly difficult. It's a tonal language. It has a different alphabet. And that's very hard for many of us. But speaking another language will help you every day of your life. Certainly in the United States, being fluent in Spanish and English is a huge asset, whether it's professional or personal. In fact, on the way down here, I was at the airport in Washington, DC, and the gentleman in front of me was having some trouble buying his coffee. He was clearly not a native English speaker. And the woman behind the Dunkin' Donuts counter didn't understand his English. And you can imagine how nice it was to be able to step up and say to him, Señor, ¿le puedo ayudar con algo? He said, yes, he was trying to get a, a latte with no sugar. I can, I can do that. <laughs> Ma'am, he'd like no sugar in his latte, please. So you, you learn how great that ability to connect with other people is. And then when it comes to your future, getting into universities, getting professional jobs, can you imagine how many doors it opens when you can walk in the door and say, I'm fluent in three languages. I can talk to, what, two thirds of the world's population without missing a beat. And some of you probably speak other languages as well. I'll give a plug, by the way, for learning language throughout your life. It doesn't get easier, but when you travel somewhere, I'm going to German-speaking Switzerland in January to ski, and I'm already thinking, I got to get out a dictionary because I need to be able to say please and thank you, and can I have the check, and I need a lift map in German. And so anytime you can learn enough of another language, people love that around the world. They appreciate it, just as we appreciate people who don't speak another language when a non-English speaker tries to say please and thank you in a language. So keep up your language skills. If you've learned three, you can learn five. So take it on, keep learning them. And again, more doors will open to you. Thank you, very insightful. Thank you, Aggie Lynn, for your question. 
Next up, we have Arlington Grand Prairie with the question. Arlington Grand Prairie, what is your question for Ambassador Kinney? Thank you. My name is Haley Vasquez and I am a senior. At the end of our IL Texas pledge, it states, I will change the world. What is some advice that you have for someone who plans to do just that, but feels as though they don't come from the right background or that they're not old enough? First of all, I hope you all will change the world. In big and in small ways, our world is changing. We want it to change for the better. We want it to be a world where we live in peace, where we live happy lives, and where all of our fellow citizens you know, have opportunities, the kind of opportunities you have. And I would not worry for one second about what your home life looks like, what your home community looks like. As I hope I've told you, I didn't come from a prestigious diplomatic family. I attended public schools my whole life. I did not go to a Harvard or Yale. They probably wouldn't have admitted me to be clear. But there are opportunities out there for people who work hard, people like yourselves who have language backgrounds, who know how to be part of a team, who studied leadership, who know what it looks like to volunteer to help others. Can you imagine the doors open to you? If you walk in the door and say to anyone who wants to hire you, hi there, I speak three languages. I've spent my years studying leadership. I know how to make things happen. I know how to serve others. And I could help this company, this government. That's a pretty persuasive approach. So don't spend four minutes worrying about the background or do you look the part? Are you what someone expects an ambassador to look like? No, I am not and I'm never gonna be. But you can do the job, you can get things done. The final point on it though is you need to pick something to do with your life that you'll have great passion in. You wanna do something that you wake up every day and you're happy to be there. You like what you do, you love the people you work with, you're excited about what your next step will be. Thank you, Ambassador Kinney, and thank you, Arlington Grand Prairie. Next up, we will have Garland High School. Hello, Ambassador Kinney. My name is Austin Sickles. I'm representing Garland High School. Um, obviously, as an ambassador, you've had the opportunity to work with many different cultures and interact with them. You talked about how you've helped Thailand and the Philippines. My question for you is, how have you been able to work through some of these cultural differences that were unforeseen for you, that you weren't able to plan for, or maybe that just presented themselves as a challenge in your workplace? Thanks for a great question, Garland. I you know, in, in a career such as mine or any career where you're working with other countries and other cultures, there will always be surprises. Because frankly, even in the United States, if you grew up in one kind of part of the country, people have a different Thanksgiving tradition in another part of the country. My, I went to the university, Clemson University in South Carolina. My roommates from South Carolina, she has macaroni and cheese with Thanksgiving. My parents are from Michigan. We don't have macaroni and cheese unless it's out of a craft box and that doesn't happen at Thanksgiving. So everybody has a different culture. And the secret is to observe and to try to figure out how you can be respectful of a culture while being true to your own. That's sometimes easier said than done. When I was in Thailand, Thailand is a Buddhist country. Now I'm not a Buddhist and I frankly didn't know as much about Buddhism as I should. And there were a couple opportunities. I was at a funeral of the king's cousin where it, there they have a funeral pyre. They, they burn the ashes of the deceased in a huge funeral pyre. And we were walked up to put a rose on the pyre. And my Norwegian colleague, the Norwegian ambassador, taps me on the shoulder and says, Christy, what do we do? Do we like bow? Do we pray? I'm like, don't look at me. I'm not a Buddhist. Like, how would I know? I, we better watch up front. And we look up front and we see our Japanese colleague, who is just a very professional diplomat, like, Watch what he's doing. He's going to get this right. He put the rose on top and did a very gentle bow. Like, okay, I think we bow. So a little observing helps. Also in Thailand, a very beautiful and ancient culture, but they have a lot of strong views about things and they have a royal family. So anytime you're dealing with the royal family, your head cannot be higher than the royal family. So if you're a royal family and you stand up, then I got to stand up. But if you're sitting, I can't stand. And you can't turn your back to them. So if I were walking off the stage, you know, I would back off the stage. And that took me a while to get used to because it's just not something, obviously, I had grown up with. And I think certainly Americans, by contrast, are much less formal. 
much more. And you never put your hand out to the royal family. You don't shake hands unless they put their hand out first. So there are a lot of lessons you're learning, and you're really just learning them by watching others. The first time I was with one of the royal princesses in Thailand, the prime minister was a nice guy. I stood to get up and stood up. you down. Not yet. Okay, not yet. Thank you. So you never know where you'll get your help from, but you definitely need to learn to manage other cultures. Thank you, Ambassador Kenny. Thank you, Gala High School. So next up is to Keller Sakno High School. What's your question? Hello, I'm Sarah Sheeler, a senior at the Keller Saginaw campus. My question for you, Ambassador Kenny, is did you ever help design an operation where the outcome was completely unexpected and you didn't know what to do? And what did you learn from that experience? That happens a lot as a diplomat because often you have plan A and it kind of goes in a completely different direction. And so I have several such opportunities. In one case, we were in Ecuador getting ready to welcome the visit of the United States Secretary of Treasury when a volcano erupted and covered the city in ash. And that's not a good thing in and of itself, but it also stopped all our mail. And when you're living overseas, mail from home packages in particular, everybody orders online. This was hugely important. And it happened in early December when everybody is looking for Christmas packages. And so you have to think like, well, what are we gonna do? We need to get this. So we ended up changing it to all go, we had a branch office on the coast of Ecuador to our branch office, who I had thought would be excited. They were always complaining about being left out. But when I called to tell them this great news, like you're not left out, you're the center of our universe now. They said, well, why does it have to be us? Like, we don't wanna have to do this. Oh my God, we need a new leader there, which we did change leaders. But so sometimes things go wrong and you have to have a plan B. You thought it would be plan A and it's gonna be plan B now and you just have to work your way completely through it. Thank you, Keller Saginaw High School for that question. Um, as you know, we have thousands of students on Zoom watching us and in this auditorium as well, I believe we have about 400 students. Um, there's one student in the crowd, I believe he has a question, has him, will you ask your question, please? Hello, Ambassador Kenny. My name is Hazem Baki and I'm a senior here at the Katie West Park campus. My question to you is, uh, the IELTS Texas motto is others before self. As ambassador of the State Department, what was your expectations for your role and how did you use your position to support others? Thank you for that question. A U.S. ambassador has a lot of important roles. The first, you're the face and the voice of the United States of America in whatever country you're in. So you have to know that every day. You're on every day. There's no off time. You are always, if, if you're at the drugstore buying toothpaste, you're the U.S. ambassador and people know what your face looks like. So you have to always be prepared to present the best of the United States. You also have a huge responsibility to look after your staff and your facilities and to look after American citizens in country. And that can be a challenge of looking after Americans who might need to be evacuated, who might get hurt, might find themselves in jail. And sometimes you can't fix their problems. An American in jail overseas on drug charges, not gonna get out of jail. And so you, you, know, you, you have to explain that to their families too. And so the expectation I had was that I was going to be a good leader of my teams. And those teams can be quite big. In Thailand, I had about 3000 employees. So it was a lot of people. They represented all parts of the United States government, the defense department, the folks who worked from the commerce department on US business. We had people from the US agriculture department. We had people who worked on environmental issues. We had an office of the Center for Disease Control. So as an ambassador, I had to make sure they all worked together. They were part, you know, we were all part of the US government, that they were getting out and doing their job, that we had the full team deployed on the field, but that we all spoke with one voice. And so you spend a lot of time communicating, circling back, making sure everybody's on the right page and that we're moving ahead as we should. Thank you so much, Hazen. That was a great question. Thank you, Katie West. Thank you, every everybody on Zoom and in person for all your questions. But this is the last question of the day. Ambassador uh, Kenny, in your opinion, what is the most important leadership trait and why? You have a lot of leadership traits. We see them around the room and all over your schools. 
And again, a good leader is unique, as each one of you is unique. You'll all bring your own talents, your own style, and I hope you do. We don't want all leaders to look and sound alike. You need different talents for different experiences. But the one overarching trait that I think matters, not just as a leader, but frankly for success in life, is the ability to communicate. And communicate can mean the ability to communicate by speaking or the ability to listen. But if you're a leader, you have to be able to communicate to those below you what their instructions are, what the mission is, those around you who are working with you. And if you've got supervisors, you need to be able to share your insights and opinions with them. You all are all so well on your way and you're able to communicate in more than just one language, but it is that ability to communicate. So I do urge you, this is a learned skill. The more you practice every opportunity you get to speak or to listen, those of you asked questions today, thank you. I'm really impressed with you and my co-hosts here on stage. You're amazing. So thank you for all of your skills, but it's the communication skill, the ability to communicate with other people, no matter who they are, no matter whether they look like you or they don't look like you, they're from your neighborhood, they aren't, it's communication. Thank you, Ambassador Kenny. That's all the time we have left for today. Um, I would like to say thank you for coming to visit our campus today at Katie West Park High School. And I would like to say anytime that you are in Texas, we would have a warm welcome for you at any Isle Texas campus around the state. Thank you very much. Can I thank my co-host? Can we get a round of applause for the co-host? Amazing. <laughs> And can I thank you all for being such a great audience? Thank you to the back row for paying attention, staying with me. I really appreciate it. And to all our viewers online, it's not the same as having y'all here in person, but I really appreciated your great questions and all of your thinking about it. And a special thanks to the principal, the area superintendent, and of course, all your teachers who dedicate themselves to building a future for you all. Can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> Yeah, and we also want to give a big shout out and thank you to the students in this room who ran today's events behind the scenes. The entire production of this event is student-led and executed. Great job, team. And lastly, but never the least, we would like to give a huge thank you to all of our Eagles around the state. I hope you were all able to take away as many valuable lessons as I have during this leadership series. Um, our next speaker series will be happening very soon, so make sure you keep an eye out for that. But lastly, we just want to give a huge thank you so once again, Ambassador Kenny, and to our wonderful media team who made this all possible. Exactly. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Let's make sure to have a great day the IL Texas way. Go Eagles! Ladies and gentlemen, please stay seated for a couple of moments until you are given direction to exit the gym.